Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your Sunday. We also have your boredom busters coming up, but first, our top story. The South Dakota Highway Patrol is investigating a deadly weekend motorcycle crash in Huron. It happened early Saturday morning when the 31-year-old driver went into a ditch and was thrown from his motorcycle, which then caught fire. Investigators say the man was wearing a helmet. A McCook Central student's senior project is revealing the dangers of being trapped inside of a grain bin. Lauren Rowling staged a grain bin simulation Saturday where people were lowered into a bin that released grain up to their waist in a matter of seconds. Safety experts then used a rescue tube to show how to remove someone who's trapped. It takes a lot of effort and cooperation within the community to put on a display like this, but for Lauren, it was all worth it because it could save someone's life in the future. It is a big farming community. Uh, I have a lot of support from my community and I really want those people that take away from this is an impact. I want them to be impacted of what grain bin safety is. According to Nationwide Insurance, 15 people across the country died from grain bin entrapments in 2022. Hundreds of people attended the Sioux Falls Heart Walk on Saturday. This was the first time the Manson family has taken part in the walk. Nine-year-old Camden, who's undergone dozens of heart surgeries, was the youth ambassador for this year's event. The Heart Association is important to our family um, just with everything he's been through. He's had over 40 heart surgeries now. He's had a stroke and just a lot of heart things. Madsen says the event is a great way to raise awareness because her family knew very little about heart disease before Camden's medical issues. Saturday's walk raised thousands of dollars with much of the money going toward research and CPR training. Let's take our first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Rutt in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. We have seen some showers and thunderstorms over the course of the early part of the morning, especially out in southeastern South Dakota, where we had a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings in place, but that was not the case in Lake Madison. 61 degrees there this morning, not much of a breeze to speak of, so it will continue to stay nice and quiet along the waters there and through a majority of northeastern Kelloland for that matter. In fact, we are still seeing temperatures in the 60s in many locations to the east with some 50s trying to hang tough like in Brookings at 58. 60 though for Watertown, 66 in Sioux Falls and Chamberlain, Aberdeen at 63, 67 Rapid City with a couple of 70s toward Phillip, Custer and Pine Ridge. There are a little few breezy locations to the southwest, Winter, Valentine and Phillip among those areas, but overall it's a quiet start to the day in terms of a lack of a breeze, but as I mentioned, we have already seen several showers and thunderstorms before the sun even rose this morning and we could see a few more today. We'll talk about that. We'll go through the rest of your forecast in a little bit. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. The winter drive in movie theater has been around for nearly 75 years, but late last month, powerful winds tore down a big chunk of the screen in a time when a number of drive ins are closing across the country. Many people are wondering if the owner will rebuild and reopen. Just my wife and kids were home. So they sent me pictures of it, but pulling into town the first time was pretty, pretty gut-wrenching. In tonight's Eye on Kelloland, we'll learn about the future of the drive-in and find out how the residents of Winter are factoring into the decision on whether or not to rebuild. Be sure to watch tonight at 10. Witness history coming alive during Civil War days in Canton. You can see reenactors stage a battle this afternoon at a 20-acre site on the western edge of Canton, near next to the Bridge Road. You can also visit encampments, see marching formations, and listen to guest speakers share their insights about the war and the Civil War veterans who homesteaded in Lincoln County. The cost is $15. Children 12 and under get in for free. Riverboat Days and Summer Arts Festival in Yankton wrap up with arts and crafts vendors starting at 9 a.m., a church service at 10, the Great Plains Zoomobile at 11, and a car show starting at noon. The musical lineup for the Not Just a Phase Fest at Sioux Falls Stadium includes Simple Plan, Story of the Year, 303, Secondhand Serenade, the Red Jumpsuit Apparatus, and DJ Joey Donut. The gates open at 2.30 p.m. You must be at least 21 to attend. The Woodcrafts Expo at the Sioux Falls Convention Center is bringing together all things woodworking, including tool exhibitor demonstrations, plus handcrafted items for gifts or home decor. 
The Expo runs from 10 to 5. Admission is $7, free for ages 12 and under. And enjoy NFL preseason football action on Kello Extra. The Denver Broncos host the Green Bay Packers. Game coverage begins at 7 p.m. Adam? Well, there's a look at satellite and radar this morning. The uh, severe thunderstorm warning in Nebraska, that's the cell I was talking about before that really was wreaking havoc in south central South Dakota. Uh, uh, reported a 77 mile per hour gust near winter just before sunrise and also went through the Gregory area in western Gregory County. But that has since moved down to the south and east as we put this into motion. There was also a severe thunderstorm watch for Tripp and Gregory counties. That was also allowed to expire a couple hours ahead of schedule. We do, however, have a little bit more rain to talk about. Some showers basically raining themselves out over Yankton a little bit earlier. Now winter still seeing a few more isolated showers and thunderstorms in portions of Trip County. Uh, Northern Zeebok County had a few little thunderstorms moving uh, into uh, areas southwest of Mulbridge in Dewey County. That's going to continue to move on over to the east. Now we'll watch the southwestern portion of the area later today. A marginal risk of a one out of five is in place for severe weather from Valentine up just about to Rapid City near Rockerville, Custer, Hot Springs as well. A uh, wind and hail are going to be the main concerns with any storm that is able to get its act together. So here we go through future cast. Now we may see some redevelopment with this line and it's going to try and push to the south and east if it's able to hold together. If it can and over toward Yankton, Chamberlain could get in on a little bit more. A couple of models even try to clip uh, areas near Hartford, Humboldt with a little bit of rain as well. But I think Sioux Falls stays largely dry today. That being said, if you do see a couple of showers in the Sioux Falls area, it would not surprise me as the latest trend over the last couple of hours has been to try and redevelop and push a couple of showers to the east. We'll get a few more thunderstorms though out to the west. There's 6 p.m. You can see one isolated cell trying to make its presence known in southwestern South Dakota, but that's not going to be the last thing we see out of this quite yet. So we're going to take a different view and go over to Monday and watch what happens out to the west. We have more showers and thunderstorms to develop, and some of those could be strong to severe as they go eastward overnight and into Tuesday, for that matter. There's Monday's risk, marginal, level 1 out of 5, basically from Harding County to Fall River County in a straight line down. Wind and hail are going to be the main concerns. Then that marginal risk pushes eastward toward Mulbridge near Eureka, Pier, and into Lyman County as well. Again, wind and hail are the main concerns. All the while, we do have warmer temperatures on the way. Odds for near to above average conditions are favored as we head toward the end of August. Today, 80s with a couple of low 90s out there, mainly dry beyond a couple of showers trying to crash the party uh, in southeastern Kelvo land and then out to the southwest as well. Overnight low temperatures tonight falling into the upper 50s and low to mid 60s, the latter more likely West River. Then for Monday, it's copy paste. For temperatures at least, widespread 80s, a couple of low 90s to the west. We could see those evening thunderstorms develop as well out in western South Dakota. The rest of your seven-day forecast for Sioux Falls features a few more chances for thunderstorms in the midweek outlook and Friday. I'm having Sunday mainly dry today, but again, we could see a couple of those showers try and push eastward at the last moment in the afternoon. So don't be surprised if you run into that. For Aberdeen, just like Sioux Falls, we do have that midweek outlook. We're watching for better chances of showers and thunderstorms. Also, just like Sioux Falls, we could see temperatures get back up toward 90 as we get ready to go into next weekend. We haven't talked about heat all that much lately, but we will be out west in Pier. We start with the 90s on Wednesday and stay there into the weekend. Also, three-day stretch today through Tuesday for showers and thunderstorms. Even Friday could see a few more as well. And in Rapid City, we'll have a three-day window Sunday through Tuesday. Also Friday, a couple of thunderstorms out that way. And outside of Monday, it's 90 or better on the thermometer, even getting into the mid to upper 90s on more than one occasion. Have a great day, everybody. For more on your local news, weather, and sports, you can always head on over to KelloWayne.com.